Good afternoon. To innovate or not to innovate? That is not the question. Because nowadays, we all appreciate the value of innovation. How to innovate is a question I'd like to explore today. How to embed innovation in the DNA of any organization. Now, organizations, of course, differ tremendously from one another, but the things that drive innovation are, in fact, quite similar. Here's the art of innovation model visualized by a triangle, a square, and a pentagon. The triangle represents the sources of creativity, the elements required for any purposeful creative act. Talent, energy, and method. Talent. I'm not talking here about somebody with an exceptional gift in a specific area. This is not about Newton and Mozart, it's about you and me. Creative talent is the set of skills by which we imagine new things and make them happen. We all have these skills, we can all improve and develop them. Energy. I'm not using the word in the Einsteinian sense. Energy is simply the personal resources we devote to an issue. Determination and time. Energy is very personal. It comes from within. At the same time, energy is very social. It's fueled by other people around us. Method. Method is a formalized way by which we creatively confront challenges in stages, exploration, solution, implementation, and alternating between creative thinking and critical thinking. Method is what makes creativity efficient. So I invite those of you who, um, who have leadership roles in organizations to develop people's talent, mobilize their energy, teach and practice creative method. The square represents structure, the organized context in which innovation happens, with four cornerstones, individual, team, target, and system. Individual. All good ideas come from individuals, and we're all more creative when doing things we like. So let's connect people with their passion. Let's give them work they'll enjoy, give them challenge. Team. Innovation in organizations is never a solo act. It always involves teams. But there are teams, and then there are teams. Good teams, bad teams, innovative teams. Not the same thing. To explore teamwork today, let's imagine a team whose members are represented by one, two, and three. Solid and shiny steel rings. In good teams, people connect with one another to form a working relationship. A good working relationship. Then they once more part ways. Time for some personal reflection. <laughs> In bad teams, egos clash and there's confrontation until they use their imagination to make a breakthrough and reconnect. And after a good fight and a breakthrough, there's real bonding. You'll need to reach deep into their souls to pull them apart. <laughs> Thank you. In innovative teams, people connect in new ways, inventing new things and new ways of seeing old things. 
they even reinvent themselves. And having achieved their team goals once more, they part ways. One, two, three individuals and great team players too. Thank you. Target. Be prepared to answer the question, what is your innovation all about? Because there are different types of innovation. Innovation can be very radical or breakthrough. Um, when everything is new, new products, new processes, new markets, landing man on the moon was radical innovation. In the private sector, radical innovation is what creates entirely new businesses, like for example, PCs in the 80s or mobile telephones in the 90s. A second type of innovation is when a company really finds the way an existing business operates. IKEA did not invent furniture, but they design and market furniture in a very differentiated way. Grameen Bank did not invent banking, but through microcredit, they practice banking in a very unique way. Then there's an innovation, that innovation of the third kind, which is often overlooked. Continuous improvement, lots of small change. In all products, in all processes, in all areas, all departments, in every nook and cranny of the organization, all the time, Think Toyota, think Honda. System. To deliver, innovation, to deliver its innovation targets, an organization needs systems to collect, evaluate, and implement new ideas. Many different systems are possible staff suggestion schemes, creative problem-solving groups, or simply giving people time to work on new ideas, solitary time or team time. The challenge here is for an organization to define the system that is most appropriate for itself. So, to establish a structure for innovation, offer people meaningful work, develop innovative teamwork, Clearly define your innovation targets and implement systems to achieve those targets. The Pentagon represents culture. The behaviors, norms, and values in which innovation thrives. And the five drivers of innovation culture are ideas, Freedom, engagement, humor, and risk. Ideas. Imagine you're looking around in your own organization. How many serial idea killers do you see? <laughs> you can see them, right? Uh, here's a more difficult question. Look inside yourself. Is there a little idea killer lurking somewhere inside? What are you doing about them? In creative companies, we love ideas. Freedom. It is possible to be creative in very restrictive, even repressive conditions. But in general, innovation thrives where there's more, not less freedom. So, in innovative companies, you have a minimalist rule book. You have open and empowering jobs. You have open and free debates. You can even disagree with your boss. Engagement is the unwritten contract between 
an organization and its people to help each other grow. It takes both sides to develop that trust and that energy in which innovation flourishes and which will stand the test of time. Humor. Yes, humor. Humor builds bonds. Humor reduces uh, anxiety and stress. Like, for example, you know it's going to be a bad day when your partner wakes you up and says, good morning, Chris, but your name is Pat. <laughs> humor, like creativity, invites us to see things from different viewpoints. risk. I like to leave the bad news last. Innovation is really impossible without risk. And taking risks means making mistakes and coming to terms with failure. I'd like to share a personal story with you. In my first job at 26 years old, uh, I was a product manager in an agricultural chemicals company in France. And I was given a new product to launch. I prepared a launch plan that departed quite radically from the norms of the times, um, appealing directly to farmers rather than distributors, um, a provocative publicity campaign, and other such novelties. The campaign flopped badly. We barely made 50% of our budget. And at the end of the season, I gathered a rather demoralized product team to explain our disaster to the CEO. A few minutes into my presentation, the CEO said, Dimis, we screwed up. Probably because we tried to do too many new things at the same time. Now, let's all go out, I'll buy you lunch. And he took us out to one of the best restaurants in Paris to celebrate our failure. Did I realize how lucky I was? In another company, this would have been career limiting. People would have pointed angry fingers of blame and spread poison. Why did they let this uh, inexperienced guy launch an important new product? Instead, I was asked to launch yet another product the year after. And that one became the blockbuster of the 80s. So to shape a culture for innovation, Promote ideas and freedom. Nurture engagement and humor. And take reasonable risks. To summarize, innovation happens when the sources of creativity are mobilized in an organized structure and within an appropriate culture. It's Lots of things working together. Talent, energy, method, individual, team, target, system. Ideas, freedom, engagement, humor, risk. It is the skillful synthesis of all of these 12 innovation drivers that makes the ultimate masterpiece, the perpetually innovative organization. That's the art of innovation. That's the theory. In our lives, there's theory and there's practice. There's thinking and there's action. Thinking is cerebral. It happens in the mind. Thinking is, thinking is, can be analytical thinking, where we break up a problem into its constituent parts. Or it can be synthesis, synthesis, where we take things from different contexts and bring them together. Action is different. Action is all about 
doing things. No more words. No more talking. No more blah, blah. And right between theory and action, there's a very exciting moment of truth. Will it work? Won't it work? Um, the idea here is for me to to get the eggs in the glasses with just one strike. I think I can do it. But thinking's not enough. No action, no results. So I'll do it. But what's a payoff if I succeed? <laughs> Will there be applause and uh, cheers and roars? Come on, show me. Yes, wow. Wow, how can I not do it after this? But what if I fail? There's risk involved here. There's risk involved here. There will be egg on my face. There will be water all over. Will you remember my talk on innovation? No. The sadists among you will go home and will say there was this guy. He tried to get some eggs into the glasses, <laughs> but he screwed up. No, no. The road to success is fraught with failure. Failure is good for innovation. So if I miss a few of the eggs, please applaud, cheer, and roar as loud as you can. Let me hear you, please. Yes! <laughs> to paraphrase Robert Sutton, innovative organizations must reward success, celebrate failure, Punish inaction. Reward success. Celebrate failure. Punish inaction. Yes! Thank you. Thank you.